Hello and welcome to episode 19 of Cold Case Christmas. In this episode, we're looking at the unsolved murder of three-year-old Rachel Runyon. Just three years old, she was abducted and murdered and her killer has never been found, never brought to justice. But we must never give up hope. So, let's tell Rachel's story. Rachel Runyon was born on June 23rd, 1979, in Weber County, Utah. She was the second of three children. She was the middle child, and she had a younger brother and an older brother. They moved to Sunset, Utah, from Tennessee, just before Rachel's birth. They thought it would be a wonderful, safe place to raise children. Despite the sense of security they had living in Sunset, Rachel's parents were aware that there was potential dangers and they used to warn their children about trusting people, not going off with strangers, etc. But Rachel was only three. She was perhaps that little bit too young to fully grasp what that meant. So it was the late morning of August 26, 1982. Rachel and her five-year-old brother, Justin, asked their mother if they could go and play in the playground of Doxy Elementary School. Normally, Elaine Runyon, Rachel's mother, would never let her kids go and play outside of the home alone, but she was preparing lunch. It was literally 15 feet from their home. 15 feet. She could see them from the kitchen window at all times. So she agreed to it. But when she called them in, only Justin and little Nathan, who toddled after them, came back. And Justin said that Rachel had been taken by a young man who wanted to buy her bubblegum ice cream. According to Justin, the man had approached them as he played in the sandpit, attempting to lure the siblings into his car with the offer of this bubblegum ice cream. Rachel told him that she liked bubblegum ice cream and he said, look, I've got that exact flavour in my car. Justin tried to protect his sister. He said, don't go any further, Rachel. And she started to walk away. She started to walk towards Justin, but the man just picked her up and shoved her in his car. She was screaming and that was it. She was gone. The police were called. They set up roadblocks around the city but this failed to apprehend the suspect. But Justin and Rachel weren't the only kids that this man had approached. He'd also approached a 10-year-old child who was able to describe him to investigators as being a light-complexioned African-American between 30 to 35 years old, about six foot tall with medium build, Afro-style haircut and a handlebar moustache. He drove an older model four-door dark blue car with wood grain stripes along the sides. He'd been at Mitchell Park talking to various children and drinking coffee for about 15 minutes before coming to the park Rachel was at and abducting her. But it was all done so quickly, so quickly. But sadly, three weeks later, on September 19th, about 5pm, a family travelling on the mountain road in Mountain Green, Utah, it's approximately 50 miles away from sunset, stopped the vehicle to let their children play at a nearby stream and throw rocks into the water. And there, close to a pile of brush, the children found what they thought was a doll, partly covered in shrubbery, floating along the edge of the stream. On closer inspection, they realised the child was actually the naked body of a female toddler with her hands bound behind her back. So there was an investigation, massive investigation. There's been numerous suspects. In 2012, investigators announced that a prison inmate in Pennsylvania who had resided in Sunset in 1982, was under active investigation, but no formal charges had been filed against this individual, but he was considered a potential suspect. There have been others, but in no cases has there been sufficient evidence for an arrest. In August, this August just gone, it was the 40-year mark of Rachel's abduction, and Rachel's mother spoke... And I want to play you that 
interview. Welcome back to Davis County family pleading for help in a 40-year-old cold case. It was today, back in 1982, when three-year-old Rachel Runyon disappeared from a playground behind her family's home. New specialist Mike Anderson talked with them today about why they're keeping hope alive so many years later. Rachel Runyon's mother says it's something that she has to do if there's any chance that someone out there is still holding back information. She wants to remind them that there is a family and a whole community still looking for answers. Thank you so much for being here. For 40 years. It was only minutes as I prepared their lunch. Elaine Runyon has been resharing, retelling. It was at that time a man lured her across the the park with promises of bubblegum ice cream and in some sense reliving those horrendous moments and justin told me he had some real bad news that while playing with her two brothers in the playground behind their house three-year-old rachel runyon disappeared the story unfolded that she was taken in a car screaming and couldn't get away she's told it so many times the words were terrifying I never expected anything like this. Keeping Rachel's story alive through press conferences and numerous interviews. So people would keep talking about it and perhaps a killer would surface. The kidnapper was described as around six feet tall, 25 to 35 years old. The subject has a medium brown complexion and had a dark Afro style haircut. The suspect's car looked similar to this blue Ford Pinto with wood trim brought here by the family's private investigator today. Brett Jamison, Sunset's current police chief, says DNA testing has been tried on old evidence, but because of methods at the time, not much was preserved. Everything's come back insufficient, in, um, inconclusive. Which brings us back to why, as exhausting as it is, Elaine Runyon will keep telling her daughter's story. Don't be afraid to come forward. It's, it's time. We need closure. And there is still a $65,000 reward out there for information leading to an arrest. If you know anything, please call the Sunset Police Department. And if you want to remain anonymous, you can reach out to Jensen Private Investigations. Mike Anderson, KSL 5 News. Sunset's current police chief, Brett Jamison, said Rachel's case is still always has been a high priority. It's been analysed by multiple agencies over the years. And there's been different crime labs, Davis County Crime Lab, Utah State Crime Lab, Utah Attorney General's Office. All the tests they've done have just come up inconclusive. And Jameson says, while the case has been frustrating to prior investigators and to the Runyon family, today's continuous advancements in DNA technology could best exploit the primary solvability factor of changes in technologies and changes in relationships, hopefully turning the concept of time as an enemy into time as our friend, he said. Now, the early DNA analysis techniques used a great deal of evidence and there's so little evidence remains today to take benefit of those newer technologies, which could be a stumbling block. But still, they never give up hope. And Jameson has acknowledged that a potential new lead, a woman who recently said her uncle was a sexual predator who drove a vehicle like the one described in Rachel's case. They've received the woman's information and are in the process of making contact with her and other family members. So who knows whether this woman could hold the key finally to this 40-year-old mystery. There is still a $65,000 reward available for information that leads to an arrest and conviction of the person who murdered Rachel Runyon. Anyone with information is asked to call the Sunset Police Department at 801-825-1620 or anybody who feels uncomfortable In talking to law enforcement, the family's private investigator, Jason Jensen, said that potential tipsters can call his office and it can be anonymous at 801-596-2455. Let me know what you think about this case. It's a very sad one. Such a little girl. Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking that her killer has never been brought to justice. And I'll see you very soon in the next episode of Cold Case Christmas. Bye, guys.